Aloha, and welcome to this practice wad called Car Rental. We're going to build another data model using Lucid uh, charts. This time for another um, canonical information domain, the car rental agency. Um, and in this case, we've got this car rental company, Rented Junker, has a lot of offices. And uh, each location has a bunch of different cars and trucks including economy standard and van. Truck types include box trucks and cargo vans. Then they've got customers with names, addresses, and phone numbers. And you can reserve a vehicle um, for a certain amount of time. And the reservation, uh, when they're returned, you get the date, the time, the odometer reading, whether the gas tank is full. OK, so. Um, I guess let's jump right into it. So we'll start the timer and then we'll go to Google Docs. We'll make us a lucid chart and we'll select, uh, I don't know, well, we can select an energy relationship diagram, although that doesn't seem to do much because, uh, okay, let's go back and find out. This is supposed to be called ERD car rental. Let me move my tab over so it's easier to ERD car rental. Is that what it said? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, let's hide the stuff that we don't want. None of this. What we actually want is the entity relationship. So we'll add those in. Okay, so let's see what the kinds of entities that we want. Um, well, clearly offices is one. So let's make an office. Office. And what else do we need? Uh, we need a bunch of cars and trucks. And car, and car types are economy standard van, truck types, box truck, and cargo van. So the question is, do we need like an explicit car type and truck type? When I look at the rest of the kinds of things that, you know, the operations that we want to perform on this, it doesn't seem like it really matters. Um, so let's just have one kind of vehicle type, I guess. Um, so we'll make another one of these. And that'll encompass, you know, all the different kinds. Um, and then if we have vehicle types, we actually need, you know, specific vehicles. That's pretty clear. Vehicle. Um, and then, let's see. And then, uh, so we've got an office. We've got a vehicle type. We've got a vehicle. Um, and then we can reserve. So we have reservations and we have actual rentals. Okay, so we need a reservation. How does that work? Well, when you reserve something, you're reserving, I think, a vehicle type, right? Um, and when you rent something, you rent an actual vehicle. So this will be the actual rental. So you rent a specific vehicle, but you you say, oh, I want an economy car or whatever, right? Um, so let's, let's do the rest of these relationships while we're here. So let's make a relationship between offices and vehicle types. So every uh, vehicle types could go to, could be associated with, um, zero or more, am I on the right side here? Yeah. So zero or more offices could have a specific vehicle type and an office could have at least one but maybe many vehicle types. It's, a, it's hard to believe, you know, an office has no vehicle types, right? It's gotta have at least one vehicle type. And a vehicle type has a relationship, of course, to vehicles Every vehicle is going to be 
exactly one kind of vehicle type and um, and a vehicle type could be associated with zero, I would say zero or more instances of vehicles, right? Because you could be all out, I mean, the company could have crashed all their economy cars and then they just don't have any of those vehicles for some period of time. So it seems like it would make sense to say um, that, um, you know, that it's zero or more. Okay, so coming down to this dude, now, what's the relationship of vehicle and rental? Well, every rental instance is associated with exactly one vehicle. And a vehicle, of course, could be associated with zero, zero, whoops, zero or more uh, rentals. Right? A vehicle could have never been rented out or it could have been rented out a bunch of times. And then if we look at reservation, I think it's the same kind of situation where we're going to say a reservation is associated with exactly one vehicle type, but it could be zero. Jeez, it could be zero to many reservations. We could have, you know, for some period of time in the history of this vehicle type, you know, there may have been no reservations yet for it. Um, okay, and then rental reservations. I don't think we need any relationship between that. The only thing that seems to be missing here. <gasps> Um, is the customer. So a customer can reserve a vehicle and they can rent a vehicle. So we're going to get the same kind of thing that we've seen before where we have a customer and then they're, they have a relationship with a reservation um, and the reservation a customer can have uh, I don't know, can a customer have never, res res that's an open question. We'll just say that you're not a customer unless you've done at least one reservation. You could go either way on that. But then every reservation is associated with exactly one customer. And then let's make a rental. Now let's just for grins, what we can say is maybe that um, you could have made reservations but never, but not yet. Like So this is some new customer you made. They've done the reservation, but they haven't come in yet to actually rent for the first time. So a customer could have zero more rentals. And of course, any specific rental is associated with exactly one customer. Okay, so that looks like <coughs> um, our relationships. It kind of makes sense. Let's see, we got uh, city. So for office, we've got address, city, and um, and then vehicle type is just, I guess, the type. And let's see, we could reduce that to one field. And then vehicle, what do we know about vehicles? Uh, don't know nothing. Let's just give it like a a unique ID, which might be its license number. And then we'll use this crazy thing to reduce the fields to one. And then a rental, whoops. The rental, date out, date in, odometer, and gas tank. So for this one, we gotta make another field. So date out, date back, odometer, fuel level upon return. Uh, and then customer, at least there's a name. I don't know. Anything else we need to know about customers? Um, I don't see anything about, oh, customer name, address, and phone number. Okay, so address, phone, number. And then reservation, date made. I don't know what else we need to know about a reservation. Let's see if I can see anything. 
Reserve a vehicle for specific... Oh, days needed. Okay. Let's put days needed. And then we'll reduce the field by one. Okay. So that looks good. So let's kind of just check over our operations. So reserve a vehicle for specific days, rent a vehicle, return the vehicle she has rented. He or she has rented. So a customer can get at their reservations. Um, reservations go to a vehicle type From the vehicle type, we can get the office um, that it's associated with. And um, we could also have this go directly to the office. I think this reservation could be associated with an office and then to the vehicle type. Or we could have two of them. You know, we have a relationship with both a vehicle type and an office. Maybe we should. Um, and so that would be also, you know, a bunch of different ways you could do it, which just makes different queries more or less efficient. Um, okay, so the date, the reservation days needed, date, this is actually date needed. Um, days needed. Okay, so I think with that, we've basically got everything we need. So the only thing left to do is to download. So we're going to file download as PNG, crop to content, print quality, download. Okay, there we go. We've got our um, got our entity relationship diagram. We'll call 12 minutes. Of course, I think you could probably do it a little quicker. Um, and I think this is one acceptable entity relationship diagram, but you know, you can interpret things differently and, and um, make different relationships in it. That's acceptable as well. All right, thanks a lot.